like to say hello and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Cedric Bailey, and I have a young man I met in Dallas of several years ago. Man, I, I don't know how to go back to the night. <laughs> Pretty good while, man. Probably yeah. it's, uh, uh, it's late 70s. How did I, did I meet you at a church in West Dallas or in the community? It was uh, probably at a football game. I was used to play for Roosevelt High School. What year did you go to Mustangs? What year? Uh, 75 through 78. Really? Okay. I got some friends. I know you know uh, uh, the, the Nedra Fain and her family, all them, you know. And then my friend uh, Donna Blackman, they all grew up there. What is that area called right there where Roosevelt is, all up in that neighborhood? Where they have uh, I just call it Oak Cliff. But they, have, they have another name for it. I, I, don't, I don't know what it is. Yes. Well, you're right about that. But anyway, brother, it was it was during my days when I worked in Dallas at Cage VN, and that's when I got a chance to meet you. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but Mr. Bagby. Yes, but Brother Joe Bag. Yeah. <laughs> but then later on, I'm at church here in Oklahoma out in Mount Pleasant, and you and I know one a man of God, uh Pastor Kirk Russian. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Talk about Pastor Kirk Russian. Oh, it's a big he developed to a pretty good friend of mine. We uh I went there with my with my sister, uh, her son married uh, a lady whose mother was a, a member of that particular church. And my sister asked me asked me to ride with her, and I rode with her, and I met Pat Russian, and I went back several several times after that. We just hit it off the first uh, first meeting. He's a he's a great brother, doing some great work too um, in his community out there. Great work. Yes, he has. So we definitely I uh, want to recognize great men that are doing great things. Well, I, I'm going to pull up on our screen right now and see if I can do this and share with everyone about your book that you put together. And let me see if I got it. It's coming, Becoming the Salt. Become the Salt. Become the Salt. That's right. Uh -huh. Become the Salt. So I'm going to share this screen right now so people can be able to see the book cover. Become the Salt. Uh, tell us about this because you got like a salt shaker pouring out. <laughs> Why did you pick that? Oh, uh, years ago, the uh, Lord put on my heart a sermon, Matthew 5 and 13, uh, I could become in the salt. And uh, sometime thereafter, started in 2008, I began to write this particular book. But that particular image, when I was writing the book, uh, when the publisher asked me what kind of image, I prayed and asked God about it. And I wanted the Bible to be open to Matthew 5 and 13. And I wanted this, a salt shaker uh, to uh, form a little pile of salt by the Bible. And the, the imagery is, uh, in my mind, the imagery was that uh, God requires of us to be more than salt shakers. He wants to be packed down in salt. And what that came, what that brought back to mind back in the, back in the 60s, my dad used to raise hogs. Mm -hmm. And when you, okay, when you when you kill the hog, he had a smokehouse in the back of our yard. Yeah, and when he killed the hog, I used to watch him pack that uh, that meat down in salt. This I mean, just pack it in mm -hmm. salt. And so one day I asked him, and this is amazing things that retain in your mind and your memory. God done a great job with our mind. I said, Daddy, why do you pack this pack all this salt on this meat? He said, Son, so you got to pack the salt in this meat very well, because if you leave one spot unpacked by salt, it'll spoil the whole meat. Wow. You know, the, you know the, allergy, the, the analogy we used to hear that one bad apple spoils the whole barrel? Yes, yes. That's that analogy. So the, the God wants us, desires of us, every part of our life, recreational, uh, social, uh, emotional, every part of our life to be packed down in his word. And when we all are packed down in his word, we can't be spoiled. Wow. No enemy will come against us, but we won't be spoiled. So yeah. that, that's the analogy that I see my, uh, and you'll see that in the uh, first 10 pages of the book. And, you know, and the reason why I asked that question is because um, we, you know, we know that salt, if all in our body, we, we you know, we, we want salt because when we get our food, we, we spread it all over, you know, yeah. our meat, you know, we want it to be tenderized and they got- And preserves meat. too. Yeah, and preserves. And, and and do all and by the way, where'd you where did your grandfather raise where was he at in the country at? No, that's my dad. My dad. That was that was in the sixth. Matter of fact, we lived in uh over off of Garrison in uh, in Oak Cliff. Mm -hmm. And he has some hogs in Altamisas. You know, if you go out Lancaster Road uh going south, you you run into Altamisa before you get to Lancaster, Texas. It was a little bit of section of, of town back in the sixties. And he had 
his hog really, pen out there. It was spacey back during that time period. It's nothing like it is now. Oh no, definitely, <laughs> definitely yeah, like it is now. <laughs> yeah, but but the salt in our body, you know, they tell us, well, if you get too much of it, it raises your blood pressure. You know, yes, sir, I mean? yes, sir. Yeah. But th th this th this is a different type. Matter of fact, uh, there were some things that I researched and found out, and I couldn't remember. I couldn't find it, and I, the publisher wouldn't allow me to put it in the book. Is that when a salt had lost its savor, the Israelites would uh, pave it or put it on the road. Mm -hmm. And the, the scripture that says it's good for nothing but to be trotted on the foot, mm -hmm. that is where that came from. But I gotcha. couldn't find that to put it in my book, so I had to take it out. I got gotcha. you. I'm going to go back here on the, I pull it up on the screen here, and I, I was noticing over here that you are also. For the last 20 years, as the pastor and the founding pastor of the WE Community Fellowship in DeSoto, tell us what made you decide you want to establish a church there, especially in DeSoto. Well, it's called WE Community. Uh, uh, in 2001, I took over pastorship at Miracle Temple Church in Dallas, and uh, we uh, together we brought that congregation up here in the in the hood, uh, about five or six blocks from Roosevelt. And I was led by the Spirit to start a ministry in DeSoto. Uh, and uh, I did that in 2008. And it, it was a challenge. I still have that ministry. Matter of fact, we're getting ready to start it back up, but we're going to do it virtual on the internet. Well, you what can be done, technology is incredible because you and I, we're in two different states and we're doing this right now. So anything, <laughs> anything yeah. is possible. Uh, with God, it is. And uh, it's just a, it's going to be a challenge for me, but I'm ready for that particular challenge. Gotcha. Uh, or every because of my, my our people have read my book in uh, Jamaica, in Pakistan, in China, and I'm really excited about that. But with this this internet, uh, uh, you can be part of the ministry anywhere in the United States and anywhere in the world. That's and, true. Uh, so this is going to be it's going to be a, a, a seek and find for me. But I'm really excited about this new challenge. And by the way, you said they can get the book all around the world. So how can they get it online? How do uh, they Amazon? It's Amazon. on Amazon. Go to Amazon. It's also in this is in paperback, and it's also in Kindle. If you uh, have an ebook and you have Kindle, you can also get it that way as well. Okay. Well, we're going to share just a little bit, uh, and let's go ahead and, and go over your notes here. It says the meaning and importance of being packed and preserved in salt, and and, and the question you say is, do you know uh, who you are called to be as a follower of Christ? And you know what? It's amazing that we're doing this because. I'm holding my book up here. <laughs> this week's International Bible Study. Session, okay. And we're in, in Isaiah. Last week, okay. we okay. were in Isaiah 47. Okay. And now we are in Isaiah 49, a mission to save is what we're reading on. Okay. I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying. The key verse this week is Isaiah 49 and 8. This is what the Lord says. In the time of my favor, I will answer you. And in the day of salvation, I will help you. And I will keep you and make you a covenant for the people to restore the land and to reassign the desolate inheritance. My God. Mm. Well, well, one of the things, Brother Cedric, as I was uh, blessed to share my gift that God has given with the whole world, is that when we leave this world or confess Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord, I mean, when I said leave this world, I don't mean like die or go to space. What I mean by that is the dictates of this world or the navigation of this world. And we are in a whole different culture. See, God asked of us and requires of us to do some things that we wouldn't taught in school. We wouldn't brought up knowing and the most of us. And that humility and that dependency on God, uh, the patience that you need to have behind the, the, the pride that you need to get rid of, a lot of those things, those attributes, those emotions, we're not used to. Mm -hmm. So God requires of us to do some things that we're not used to doing. You're right and it's, about and it's that. challenging. So that's a different culture. And being a Christian is tough. You know, you're going to be in a situation where you're going to have to make a decision in life. You know? Oh, definitely. And, and, and people can influence you if you allow them to influence. You. Yes, so now I'm going to go to your contents and I'm going to pull that up on the screen at this time because okay. I don't want to tell the whole book. I want people to go. Here and <laughs> Is that okay, doctor? Oh, no, it's beautiful. But why are you looking for this particular uh, chapter to talk about? Okay. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that I'm, I'm definitely excited about mm -hmm. is at the end of every chapter, there's an invitation to discipleship. 
gotcha. well as a place to take notes. Not only am I a preacher, I'm a Bible teacher. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I love that part about my ministry that God has given me. Well, let's talk about uh, the, the contents of passing the salt on, what is that, page five. Page five. I got it right here. And you're reading Matthew 5. Okay. Matthew 5 and 13. The, okay. That encompasses the story uh, in, in, in the pretty, pretty much in its entirety that I shared with you earlier about my dad and being an adolescent and uh, understanding and remembering some things because some of these things and thoughts that came back to my mind, uh, especially when I talked about the salt and the packing down and the spoiling, I was surprised that I remembered all of that. We're talking about the uh, late 60s here, you know, <laughs> and I'm 62 and this is 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, the mind is amazing, the thing that we can retain uh, in detail. Mm -hmm. in detail. And uh, I, I thought that was pretty amazing that God allowed me to, uh, that to resurface in me, and to write this book in reference to uh, how important or what the meaning of being preserved, uh, being packed down with the word of God. This is an analogy, a metaphor. The start of the metaphor of being this soaked and packed down with the word of God and allowing the word of God to use you in every area of your life and be compassionate of God. And that's one thing we really, really miss today, especially going through this pandemic the last couple of years. Yes, yes. We had Christmas as scared as everybody else. Yes. And people are running to us for answers and, and comfort. You know, we, we said, why are you running to me? Yeah, you're right. Because, right. It, this is a God design thing. Anything yeah. that happened, God's already knows about it. And I have begun, I have began to understand that and have confidence in that. So if I have confidence in God, I know that, okay, God, what is it you want me to do? Yes. Well, I, I, I'm looking at this, and I'm on page six now, and it says, if you don't know who you are, in other words, your identity, the identity, then it's going to be difficult, if not impossible, to recognize and challenge any unhealthy influences or habits in your life. To avoid unhealthy connections, we must identify ourselves with Christ and maintain our connection to him. And you wow. were just talking about influence earlier, before, we, before you read that. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. <laughs> Wow, that is powerful. But listen, folks, I want you to, I'm just doing just a brief conversation with the man of God. And I want you to be able to, to pick up this book. I want you to be able to find it. And I want, I was reading, I was just reading uh, your cover at the bottom. And I'm glad I got this book. So I'm going to spend some time. Uh, finding I appreciate it. it. But Thank it, you. But it says also here, as I pull this back up on the screen, your closing comment on the cover of the book is so amazing. When you say God wants so much more of you than having only a tiny sprinkle of salt in your life, he wants you to be so covered with his word that it, it uh, permits. Is that what you're saying? It permeates, yeah. Talk about that, the aspect of your life. What are you saying there? Well, what I'm saying is uh, every, and like I said earlier, every area of your life, some believers, and I'm, I'm the same way, I'm, I'm, I'm all believers. When I confessed Jesus Christ in 1984, I was not aware uh, of everything that the Holy Spirit had for me. I later on realized that everything God is, he gave to me on that day that I accepted him. Yeah. But I learned this later on in life. So when I had a new discovery or a new revelation in the word, I'm saying, well, God is doing something new. I discovered that it was already in me. Mm -hmm. He just uncovered it because he began to trust me more. Yeah. Um, I'm a big thing on respect as, as a man and from my, the family that I was raised in. And I understand, I believe with all of my heart, when God can trust you with his word, he would give you more of a deeper understanding of how to share his word. Mm -hmm. But if God can't trust you, if you can't trust your children, you're not going to give them the keys to the car. Yeah. You're right so, about that. So, well, Dr. Sublet, I, I want to share this with you in closing. I'm going to show you my screen one final time. And I want to- I appreciate you, Brother Cedric. And as I show you this screen, you're going to see, you said, you said in 1984, so if we back that up, you were in your 30s because I was 38 when I really took them serious, you know. Well, I, I was uh, I was like 26. Yeah. Um, in 1990, I started preaching. Matter of fact, I had just turned, it was 11.30 p.m. Uh, September the 16th, 
uh, September 17th would, would have been my birthday. 30 minutes before I turned 30 years old, I was called to the ministry in my house. Praise God. That is a testimony. And now I'm going to share my screen and show you a picture, okay? Okay, sir. This is Margaret Tomlinson. <laughs> I'm holding my, my stellar. Okay, congratulations. When I was 12 years old, that church, which was a church of Christ, sent for me and several other kids uh -huh. and i spent time with her at church sang songs went to sunday school okay and then later on in life right after that her and her husband opened the door for me to go to her house every sunday for one year okay sit there with her three kids mm. i asked her one day why did she pick me she said well because I was that little boy that she just fell in love with that God had told her to uh, to introduce to Jesus Christ. Mm. And, and she, she shared a lot of things. And in other words, the things my mother couldn't do, she was able to do. Praise God. And and it wasn't about money. It was about, about the love of God. Service. And she told me that I was going to be great at age 12. Okay. And here I am in... in, in, in uh, Back in 2014, I was recognized as one of the greatest announcers in the country. You've always been good to me. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I'm not trying to talk about me, please. Uh, I, hear, I hear what you're saying. I'm just using my story to share with you what God will do for you. And that's why I picked you to be able to talk about become the salt and do this interview. I'm grateful to the Lord for that, man. So I'm praying that people will want to get your book. And I'm going to ask you one more time. How can they get it and how can they follow you? Uh, they can go to uh, Amazon um, and put in the search engine, become the salt. It'll take them right to it. And it's also, it's, it's in paperback and it's also an ebook. Or if you have a Kindle, you can get it right away. All right. Dr. Willie Sublett, thank you so much for being my guest. And I pray that people will watch this message and they will share the more we share, the more that we be able to share the word of God. And in a time like this, oh yeah, we need them because see, as you see now, we're dealing, even politicians now, you're going to see politicians, they're going to start including Jesus Christ in their, their campaign. They should have been doing this in the first place. You oh know? my goodness. Yeah. And I then mean, all, all these I'm lawmakers, you gotta, you gotta hold them accountable, you know, because we, you know, we done forgot all about him. At least some of us have. Oh, yeah. And it we, seems that way. Yeah. So I'm going to let you get the closing comment, and we are done. So go ahead, sir, with the following. Well, well first of all, I want to say uh, all, all praises to the Lord. Uh, I'm grateful for this opportunity. Thank you, Brother brother Bailey, for your, your time. Uh, like I said, we've, we've been knowing each other uh, for a while, but we really got reintroduced to each other uh, a few years ago through uh, the Kirk Russian and, the, and your church. So thank you for the time that you've given me. Uh, I pray that uh, Lord's hand is continuing to be upon your life and all of those that you love. And uh, we, we know, I know and feel in my spirit that a lot of people will be blessed by this book. And it, it, I think it should be on every, every chef, every Christian chef in the world, personally, um, because God has really ordained this book. And uh, I'm, I'm blessed to be able to share my gift with the whole world. And again, thank you very much, man. God bless you, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Willie Sublett, become the song. Thank you so much and God bless you, sir. All right, man.